morning or good afternoon. <clears throat> By this time, you should have um, have gone and printed out the periodic table and the OPS one. You're also working on, or have worked on, the bottom of the page, which is your top. Uh, you've gone and took a periodic table. printed out um, for you and oops sorry <clears throat> and you have uh, you are now going to color in all um, the fair table with a key for all of these things so that you know where all of these Then the question is, what about the stuff above? So, just in case you couldn't find it, and to check to make sure we agree on what you found, um, it's a little bit about the history of the periodic table and um, and the basis or what the periodic table looks like. Um, <clears throat> the periodic table, the first one was, and there were there were many out there, but the person who gets first credit is a guy named Mendeleev, and he was Russian. And he set up his periodic table by, by mass. And what he did was um, he created a, basically a picture. He lined up elements um, by their characteristics. Characteristic that he lined up by mass, and what he found was that he could predict characteristics of elements that he felt haven't existed yet, but could. They could be out there, but <clears throat> he he had they had not found them at the time. So, <clears throat> and, and he he predicted uh, a few and. When they actually were discovered, he was he was he was close, very close to the right answer. So, <clears throat> so he basically created a, um, a a a picture of patterns of characteristics or properties of the elements. <clears throat> they changed a little after he found out a little bit more about elements and in the modern what they call the modern. see it's based off a guy named Mosley um, because it's by atomic number not by atomic mass and that changed a little but in general it was still the same idea if you line them up <coughs> you will see certain trends and properties and there are predictive powers within the, um, the table uh, <coughs> There are other people who have since changed the periodic table slightly, um, and if we have time, we'll talk about it. Um, with the periodic table, <coughs> they, you create uh, uh, the patterns, and there's a name for, the, for that. It's called the Modern Periodic Law. And what the Modern Periodic Law periodic law is, says, and you're supposed to, then it's like a definition. Um, if you align the elements by increasing atomic number, and you put it into the shape of the modern periodic table, what you find is that there are periodic trends, and they're known you go across the table from left to right. As you go across and you roll on the periodic table, no, this is, that's it, that's the one. Okay, um, as you go across a periodic table, that's the side row, it's called period. And 
in the definition of the periodic law, which again says that if you align the elements by atomic number and you put it in the, in the shape of the, the periodic table, there are known periodic, which, is, which means cyclic or same patterns. So there's periodic trends as you go across the, per the period. Okay. <clears throat> well, that's not the only thing. From the alignment using the modern periodic law, uh, the alignment of elements in the periodic table, there are other things that come, come out besides trends of certain properties. And we'll, we'll talk about all the properties later. Um, <clears throat> since there are, um, the elements are aligned by increased atomic number, what it also does is, as you know, it, it's also by increasing electrons. And that's how we're able to and now I'm doing the walk on this one here. That's that's how um, you're able to figure out the electron electron configuration from the periodic table. <clears throat> and as we talked about before, uh, the other uh, the other big thing that happened is that which is this right here. Let's uh, see. What you find is that if you write out the electron every element in a column, they will have the same type and number of valence electrons. Like in the first column, it's called the alkali valence. They, every element in the first column ends in S1. So they're, chemi they're basically chemically similar to each other. More similar than They're a little different from each other because even though they have the same number and type of valence electron, where those valence electrons are located, different energy levels. So they are a little different, but in general, their chemical characteristics are so similar that we say that the other name we give um, columns on the periodic table are families or groups due to the uh, understanding of, s of the similarities in the chemical behavior of all those elements. So that's really big. And that's true not on, only of the first column, but of all columns. And you've seen that already if you've done the exceptions to electron configuration. And that, to me, is just as big as just uh, than the periodic law itself, knowing that there's periodic trends that you can predict elements from knowing other elements in a, in the row or the period. And the other thing it does is it, um, it shows you, um, let's see, where did, where did it go? It shows you the difference between a metal, non-metal, and a, and a semi-metal, which is another way of saying um, <clears throat> the periodic table is lined up, and I apologize, I don't think I can um, orient it. find is do the electron configuration and <clears throat> in the pull of the nucleus to to the valence electron is that there are three regions. There's a, a stairs that exists that goes down here and it's more pronounced in, in our car music. It's not as pronounced here but <clears throat> what happens is all the elements to the left of the stairs are metals, and all the um, elements to the right of the stairs are non-metals. Okay, and everybody who is on the stair, which is this guy, this guy, this guy, these two, these two, and these two, are what they call semi-metals or metal ores. And 
what the difference between the, uh, those two three characteristics of um, the metals over here, well, remember, goes all the way over here to the uh, spheres, which is right here. Metals on this one tend to have low pull of the nucleus to the valence electron, so they tend to have a low columbic force, so <coughs> they uh, it's very easy, meaning energy wise, for the valence electrons to be released from that. Over here, it's the other way around. In the nonmetal area, <coughs> there's a high columbic force for the valence electrons from the nucleus. So one, they definitely they don't they don't release their valence electrons usually. And if they do, they're not releasing the valence electrons. They get they're grabbing valence electrons from from someplace else, somebody else. <coughs> or they tend to shear their electrons. So you know, using the periodic table, that oxygen um, <coughs> will will be an element that is either um, being uh, attracting valence electrons or sharing their valence electrons, and they won't usually give them up. And over here, let's say uh, potassium. Even even to the point of place like iron in here, they will they will be uh, re they will be releasing their electrons um, almost always. Um, so uh, they will tend not to share, and they will tend to uh, give and, uh, you know give up. to the property of oh, what about the seven metals? Seven metals you can't you can't tell just by looking on the periodic table. So you need more information because they're kinda in the middle. Sometimes they'll act like a seven metal, excuse me, metal and sometimes they'll act like a metal, depending on who who they hang with, and that's a whole different thing. So <clears throat> so what usually happens is um, the properties of uh, metals and non metals tend to come from those characteristics of uh, nucleuses that have great pulls of valence electrons and ones that don't. So things like metals, like I said, tend to give up their valence electrons to form cations, positively charged ions, and, <coughs> and uh, non-metals tend to uh, take electrons in to form anions, which are negatively charged, uh, negatively charged ions, um, and we'll get to we'll get to that all uh, you know, a lot. Um, metals tend to be um, <coughs> have um, the have do not deform well, meaning um, they are, they are um, uh, excuse me. Do deform well, um, and they tend to be, uh, which means they they tend to be brittle. Uh, sorry, they tend to be malleable and ductile. Malleable meaning ability to hammer it in, make it small uh, thickness without breaking. And metals also tend to be um, ductile, which means you can you can um, take wire. Spread it out, reducing the diameter and not have it break. Okay, um, the, uh, and metals tend to be uh, good conductors of electricity and for heat. Um, Non-metals non tend not to be those things, um, <coughs> but non-metals. That's 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 enough for right now for the elements. 
in semi-metals would be something like two. Okay, and again, let's do all two of these. Uh, the whole of the nucleus to the next lactone, which is known from how the periodic table is aligned, because <clears throat> due to the modern period law, periodic law, um, the table was set up so that you have increasing atomic numbers and <clears throat> the shape of the table causes the elements to line up so that as you go across a period or row, you have known periodic trends. And as you go down a column family group, you have the same number in electrons so chemically they have the same okay I hope it uh, hope that helps.